lose them. But I walked all the way to the hospital, got sewed up, didn't want to tell my parents. They'll probably freak out. So I'm eating, you know, and I'm, you don't want to show my mom. And I got, you know, uh, kind of distracted, distracted, lowered my hand. And my mom's like, oh, you have a bug. <laughs> she hit me. She's like, oh, I killed it. Did you see how much blood that bug had? You got to wipe it off. I'm like, that bug's going to be in my face for like three days. <laughs> the stitches. But anyway. As I say, okay, we're not going to do that dangerous. In the Olympics, um, it was accepted bone arrow because it was more safe. It was, a, it was a safer of the thing. So I'm like, okay, if it's safe, I'm going to try it. So I would sneak out at night and just do bow and arrow until late. My, my fingers would actually bleed of how many times I would actually just practice hitting trees and trees. And that got, you know, I, I started getting better and better. I'm like, okay, so I, I need, I need a, a new thing, you know. So I'm, I told my friend, I said, hey, shoot me the arrow and I'm going to catch it. I don't know if he's a good friend for actually obeying me or a really bad friend for obeying me, but he's like, all right, fine. So he grabs the arrow, the bow, and he points it at me, and he shoots it. Now, miraculously, I have no idea, but I caught it. And when I caught it, I'm so excited, and I'm like, wow. He, sh he, he gets another arrow, prepares it, but I'm too excited catching the first arrow that I don't know he's loading another one. So when he releases, he's like, Marcel! And I look, I see the arrow way too late. And I, when I go like this, it actually hits my hand. Now, the tip... You could see it on the other side of my hand. Sorry, this is too much for this morning. But um, so I pull out the arrow from my hand. It starts squirting. Okay, I'm not going to stop. So I hold it. And uh, I actually pretty big, um, pretty big uh, 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 scar there. They called me Jesus for a month. I know it's kind of sacrilegious, but Jesus, because I just, never mind. So, yeah, when you put yourself between the bullet the arrow and the target, bullet and the target, arrow and the target. When you put yourself in between, you could expect bad things to happen, okay? Now, I don't know of those who can tell, but this guy, I'm pretty sure <laughs> this boy was the one <laughs> shooting. Okay, I'm going to go off a limb and say that's probably what happened. But, fun fact, a cheetah could run 60 to 65 miles per hour. A bullet will be 2,600 feet per second, which is roughly 1,800 miles per hour, okay? An arrow has been uh, uh, marked at competition at 150 miles per hour, 150. <laughs> what was I thinking? I have no idea. Of course, mine, my bow wasn't that professional, but when you put yourself between the bullet, uh, the arrow, and the target, when you put yourself in between, just, just know you're it's probably going to catch up to you, okay? And we're going to go in, in depth in this, and, and I'm setting up a stage for you to enter a realization of what we're actually talking about this morning. But when we, we talk about it, okay, there's people in the Bible that I, I, I love the Bible. I love the Bible because the Bible is something that teaches us, that inspires us, but most importantly, um, it kind of points out the obvious, but we end up doing it uh, anyway. For instance, this book tells me that the iron, when it's plugged, metaphorically speaking, it's hot. Now, I have no idea why we constantly have to touch the iron. Psst, oh, man, that was hot. When the instructions say, hey, when it's plugged, it's hot. People in here, David, for instance, uh, doing back, what was he doing back at his place when the kings were supposed to be at war? This is 2 Samuel 11. What happened? I could ask a lot of people, not, n not many people are going to know actually what I'm referring myself to, and that's the sad part, okay? The sad part is that we don't know the instructions that are saving us from putting our lives between the arrow and the target. What was he doing there? Well, he gets up, he goes out, and he sees Bathsheba. Remember that story? You taking a bath, Bathsheba, don't forget. What was he, he, he would never seen that. And he never would have committed the mistakes that he had if he wouldn't have been where he had to be, which is not in the middle of the target and the arrow. Then you have, you know, Samson, you know, doing in Tinma, looking for a Philistine woman. We know what they're talking about there. Or in the Valley of Sorak, where he met Delilah. We know what he's talking about there in Judges. But I encourage you to read it because it actually is not just an inspiration. It's a warning. It's instruction. It's a manual. Okay, it's really important. We could talk about Amnos. We could talk about uh, Hezekiah. We could talk about there's plenty of more that put themselves in the wrong place or trusting in the wrong people, and you're still putting yourself in danger's way, okay? So moving forward. Uh, now, a lot of us think that we're the archer, and we act accordingly, and we think, well, I'm the archer. You know, I, I see a target, and I shoot. Well, okay. Uh, I hope I say this one right. Tac taxophilite. 
Taxophilite is he who has a passion of, of bow and arrow. Taxon means bow, and philos means a lover, means amore. So uh, tax taxophilite, when I was first reading this, I actually said uh, taxophile. Tax <laughs> I don't know. So the passion of the bow and arrow, okay? Now there's people in life that act like that. Samson was one of them. When he said, okay, you know, I'm, I'm just I'm going to pull my arrow back. Hello? All right. I keep fooling around with this. There's a reason um, why. Um, there's Peter. Peter acted like a, 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 an archer when he went and he took out his sword and then chopped off someone's ear. Remember that story? He, Jesus, I could, I, I could imagine him looking at Peter like, that's, <laughs> that's not where the target is, Peter. Like, you just totally aimed somewhere else and just shot and created a big mess. Okay, then we got David. Now, we mentioned David with Bathsheba, but exactly him thinking a target this is this is why okay you know he actually like totally disobeyed like five of the commandments five out of ten that's a lot okay he, he looks at Beth Bathsheba and he coveted then he went and he committed adultery then he went and he lied uh, uh to Bathsheba's husband uh, uh, Uriah then he he, he he stole her basically he's stealing stealing the wife away then he went and he sent uh, the husband to get murdered so you know there, there's that all of that because he was pointing at the wrong target, okay? He said, I'm, this one, I'm going to take it. I see that. I want her to be my wife. Those are not targets of God. I would love to sit here and say, what are the targets that you think that God has sent you, you know, in school and a relationship and friends and music, and we, we keep repeating this, but yet you keep thinking, ah, I got this. This is me. This is, this is my shot. Then we got Job. Job said, the enemy comes, his friends comes, his wife come and say, hey, just, just insult God and be done with it. Here's a beautiful, big target. Just take it. And he's like, no, that's, that's not the target God, get, God was meant for me. The enemy said, end your suffering. Just please, just hit this target. No, I'm not the archer. I'm not. But if you're going to be the archer, because there's some people that have that leadership in them. If you're going to be the archer, you know what, what differentiates these three with that one? Is focus. What are you focusing on is the important part. There's a story. Uh, now, uh, originally this story is uh, from India, so the names are uh, kind of difficult, so I kind of changed the characters, okay? So let's say Jenny. <laughs> Jenny was uh, a, a really good archer. She was a student, okay? And... Um, Jenny, the teacher, was Mr. Jim, not Mr. Pizza Jim's over here, but Mr. Jim's, okay? So Mr. Jim uh, really appreciated how, how good Jenny was until another student says, you know what, Mr. Jim, you have favoritism. You prefer Jenny over us, and we don't really appreciate that. He's like, okay, well, let's settle this with uh, uh, hitting a target. I mean, you, you say that I have favoritism in her in archery? Sure. So he put a little wooden bird. He put a little wooden bird in a faraway mango tree, and there in the mango tree, he's like, all right, uh, whoever believes this to be true, go forth. So Roberto comes along, and Roberto's like, okay, I'm, I, I got this. And he goes, and he pulls back his arrow. It's a very far distance. He sees the sun, the clouds above him. It's shining in his eyes. He sees the grass, the field, the tree, the branch. And then he, he sees the bird. He takes his shot, and he misses. Okay. Then, you know, Jacobo comes along. And Jacobo comes, and he's like, I got this, I got this. He doesn't, he can't really see the trees or, 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 or the, the field or the sun. All he sees is the branch, and he sees the bird, and he sees perhaps a mango behind the bird, and he takes his shot, and he, he misses. He's like, wow, okay. And then Jenny comes along. She grabs her bow. She puts it inside. She pulls back. She doesn't see the sky. She doesn't see the field. She doesn't see the tree. She doesn't see the branch. She doesn't even see the mango behind she barely sees the bird kind of blurred fog up. What she sees is a little painted eye on the bird and that little dot. And she takes her shot, hits the bird, hits the wooden bird. Your focus, aim small, miss small. When you have a s focus and you don't see anything around that target, you're more likely to succeed. But in, in our daily life, we, we, our, our target is so broad, so big, and yet, God, help me to have faith in, in this little thing. But what, what are you looking at? How do you expect to aim when you're looking everywhere else but where that target is meant to go? 
it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't add up. And then on top of that, we have the audacity to blame God when we miss. Ah, you gave me an arrow. You gave me a bow. I'm the archer. I'm powerful. I'm strong. I have good aim, and I missed. Well, what are you, where's your focus? Next, we have those who think they're the bow. Now, these are Okay, we, we, we say that, oh, I'm the archer, but usually we complain like we're the bow. Oh, the tension and the stress that was being pulled and set upon me, and I always shoot the arrow. If, if it wasn't for me, the arrow would never be flung, okay? They're good at holding pressure. Must learn to, to, uh, uh, to let go. I got cut off, but it says we must learn to let go sometimes, okay? Dry shot. Dry shot in archery is something very dangerous. It's when you grab a bow and there's no arrow and you pull back. And when you let go and there's no bow, that tension, nothing to actually expel. And what happens is it could actually shatter the bow and it could hit your face and it's really dangerous. So those who actually do this in life and be like, well, I'm just tension. I just got to let go. But they have no substance. They have nothing in their life that actually is going to come out positively. They end up shattering. When you have nothing inside to shoot out and actually hit a target, and you're just like, I just got to let go of everything. I don't want school. I don't want family. I don't want friends. I don't want to And you just explode. You're breaking inside. But when you have a target and you're like, all right, enough. Now, a great example of this is Jonah. Jonah said, you know what? I got sent to a sign. I kind of don't want to go. That's a lot of pressure. Uh, I don't want to say that people to begin with. And he ended up sca- escaping. And then you got Abraham. Okay, Abraham in that beautiful verse where the tension is big. I'm sorry, you got to kill your own son. That's a huge tension. Wow. And yet he was able to withstand it. Now, there's a difference. Now, I want to I wanna, I wanna show something. This is called a compound bow. Now, it's uh, for hunting. So it's very strong. The tension, you, they're, they're bigger ones, and it'll be according to weight. Okay, there's, there's, there's pounds involved of, of when you, you pull back. The, the harder it is, now this is Abraham, okay? A very difficult, very hard to pull back. It is. Once you reach the limit, ah, I could barely get one, one finger. Once you reach that level and you are a compound bow, you're like, all right, God, I trust you. It's a very difficult thing you're asking me. But I know what I am. And I know what I'm for, and I will relax, and I will wait for the perfect moment. Breathe still, and then I'll release. And then you hit your target. But then, you got your recurve bow. Now, this was Jonah. Jonah, it's a tension that doesn't have that. So when you're there, oh, this one's a lot easier to pull back. And this is where people get confused. They're like, this is easier to pull back. But when you have that, you know, that target in sight and you really have to aim and it's a hot, sunny day and you have to be there, the longer you stay pulling it back, all of a sudden the weight duplicates itself and it becomes really hard to keep this pulled back. And you start shaking. And you're like, I got this. It was really easy to start with. I don't know why I'm shaking. And it becomes difficult. And then, and then we have the not so smart people who says, I don't believe in tension. Tension is boring. Tension, I don't like it. It's very stressful in my life. Let's do away with it. You're no longer a bow. You no longer shoot anything. Because without tension in life, without that lessons, without that uh, uh, um, uh, purpose, you're just a stick. You're not, <laughs> you're not good for anything. But you know what the sad thing is? Most of us say, okay, fine. I have a lot of social expectations. My mom tells me this. The school tells me that. So stick, we know that sticks is, is a no-no, okay? It's a no-go. So we're not doing a stick. The compound bow is too hard. And the other one, it's a, it's a lot of things. So what we end up doing, and this is what a lot of people end up doing, is this one. This one's colorful. This one's no tension at all. This one's nice. Oh, look. It has a light. That's so cool. So easy. I get to point my target. Now, light comes from Lucifer, light bearer, okay? That that purpose of just having something to look for. Now, of course, it's metaphorically. I'm not just trying to put something inside where it doesn't really exist. But I'm just saying, it's colorful. 
no tension, and look. The arrows are so cool. Now, with the other bows, when I put an arrow inside, I have to keep it completely, perfectly balanced. My life has to be balanced because if not the arrow, poof, it falls. This one has a hole where I could just put it inside. It doesn't even have fletchers. The fletchers, we don't really take care of our, our arrows, and we'll, we'll explain later. But look, and there, instead of having the big, big target without the numbers, we have this other colorful target that has numbers, which means instant gratification. It means when I hit something, bing, 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 I get some points. The other one doesn't have points. It's kind of hard to read. When God has a target this big and he has something for you, but you can't read it, you're like, well, I don't know. What do, what do I get out of it? This other one seems pretty cool. I, I, I get points. This is, it's easy. I mean, I, I just I have to point and release. Wow, instant. I didn't really even have to aim. I didn't have to suffer. Whole society is like this. And, and, and don't you dare say I'm wrong. Because you know it, you see it, you feel it, you are it. I witness it. I'm, I'm a part of it. Where we get relationships where they're easy. Oh, don't, don't get me a relationship where they make me go to church and we have to read the Bible together and we have to do this. No, no, no. Let's go have ice cream and, and go play video games together. Now, that, that I could do. That, that's, that's, that's cool. Come on. Don't give me that hard stuff I got to pull back and all of a sudden it's really difficult. Come on, guys. You're making me sweat. That's not a relationship. That's slavery. No, it's not. It's learning. It's great. And you hit a target that's value is 10 times more than that thing because – when you get used to this one, and you're like, all right, I like it. I got a hold of this. And then you see something that you actually like, something that actually matters in your life, family, friends, something that you want to get a hold of, but your bow is this, it'll ricochet right off. It will not stay. It will not stick. It will not hold. And you're nothing but a toy. And then you get worried and wonder why people play games with you. Then people think that they are this thing. Now, uh, the bag that archers use to hold is called the pointy sticky bag thingy. Just kidding, that's not what it's called at all. It uh, is actually called the quiver. This quiver, uh, in medieval times and in most parts of history, can hold about 60 arrows. Now, I've met people who are the quiver. And they almost go unperceived, almost go unnoticed. They're, they're just there, and uh, they do great things. And we can see it in Second Kings, Kings 5, 2 through 8. In the verse of Naaman's wife's servant, where she says, Unto the mistress, would God my Lord were, uh, were with the prophet that is in Samaria? For he would recover him fr from his leprosy. Someone who carries what is important and says, I, I know Jesus. I'm a bag, and I, I may not have the, the strength, you know, like David or, or Daniel or, or all these important people, but I know someone who does. That's a person that, that is worth hanging around. Now, I'm not saying you have to be like the bag. I'm not saying you have to be like, you know, the archer or the, 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 the bow. I'm saying there's people that have those qualities, okay? And there's people that have another quality, which is the target. They're either the target and be like, Come to me, and I can offer you something good. I'm not plastic. I'm substance. I'm real. And there's those who are actually know what the target is meant and can differentiate between targets and targets. But most importantly is where are you putting your target? Now, I love it. You can see it with King Solomon, okay? He asks for wisdom. He does 1,000 sacrifices begging for wisdom. Look it up. Amazing story. And then he gets 700 wives and 300 concubines. That's a lot of targets, okay? For those who have a girlfriend, if you have one girlfriend, that's enough. Okay, that's, that's a target. You got to you gotta shoot. You got to pay attention. And you add one more target, you get distracted. No, bad boy. That's not cool, okay? <laughs> who would add 700 of those and then 300 concubines and think that they're going to find wisdom in the midst of all those targets? 
not going to happen. Are you putting your target? Okay, let's just put stuff in the way. You know, I got my friends, I got my fr uh, my activities, my family, all that. And then I, I, I have God in there. And, and don't worry, don't worry. He's there. I put the target up. I, I'll hit it when, it when it matters, when it counts, in the struggles. I'm going to say a prayer, and I'll hit the target. That's, how are you going to hit the target? Where are you putting yourself as a target? Or are you hiding? It's just, there's too, way too many metaphors that you could get from bow and arrow. Or are you putting yourself hidden behind all of that and say, God, I'm here. Hit me with them blessings. Right here. I'm open. And you're hiding behind pornography, behind music, behind all those stuff. And you're saying, God, hit me with them blessings. Is it going to happen? Is it a little difficult? 300 concubines? It sounds like the Bible will, will, will now, Marcel, we're not allowed to have 700 wives. So that's not applicable. No, you're allowed to have 700 distractions. 300 more, and we actually do. Some are made to be the arrow. Now, the arrow, ah, the arrow's nice. You know, there's, there's cheap arrows. Here's a cheap arrow. It's not that, that important. It's a little wooden one. And then you have your, your big papa bear. Ugh. Ooh, it is nice. See the difference? Well, those who have shot this, if just flying through the air, you can hear it wheezing, coming close. Yeah, actually, I almost ki killed, never mind. Um, <laughs> I made sure that there was no one in the area, made sure. Took my, my bow, and I would, I would shoot a tree from a very, very far distance. I'm like, I'm going to hit that tree over there. So I pulled back, and I guess I'm telling this story. No idea why, but I'm sure there's a lesson at the end. Because when I pulled back, and I shot it, and it's in the air, and I hear it, <laughs> and it's going down, my sister comes running out the house in the same direction. And I'm like, Natalie! And she ducks. I was like, that's not good. Because she ducks, you become a bigger target. So she ducks, and the arrow poof, lands really right next to her. And she looks up, and waves at me, and goes running because she was late to school. <laughs> uh, she's amazing. But <laughs> when you shoot, whatever you're going to shoot, it has to be in a safe manner. And when you have your Christian, and you are ready to share that message, some people think they're themselves as the arrow, and they're like, well, Jesus said this, 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 and instead of actually sharing and pointing the target, you actually can harm someone. You actually become a, a weapon of mass destruction. And people no longer see an, a, a, an, an arrow. They don't see strength because it symbolizes strength, freedom, and liberty. It's now a, a weapon of, of a threat, okay? When David killed Goliath, yeah, that was a threat, but Goliath was a threat not to him, because he could literally just said, you know what, I'm going to go back home. Goliath was threatening the message of God. And when that happened, he's like, nah, you could insult me. You could insult this army. I I'm, I'm don't have much to do with that. But when you insult my God, now let me become this arrow. Because that, now that is worth defending. Okay? Now, I'm going to end with this. We went through arrows, we went through bows, we went through meaning, we went through life. And I wish I could have gone in depth with so many Bible verses, so many characters from the Bible, and really explain what they all did, how they did it, their mistakes, how we could learn from it. I encourage you to do it. Because 44 different authors, 66 different books, verses and, and stories, and kings and gods and leopards, and this is the greatest book ever written. I mean, I, I, I went and gave a class to CTA, a Bible, um, this week. And we were in Bible class, and then I was there, and I'm like, man, I took out, you know, a whole bunch of books of literature, and I took out a book of, of um, you know, Sherlock Holmes, and I took a book of Jane Austen, and all these famous literatures. And I'm like, there's one book that actually has, has it all. It has, you know, from thieves to prostitutes to rapers and killers and, and gods and all this stuff. And we're like, ah. You know, we, we don't pay attention to that. You know, I, I'm, I'm an archer. I don't, I don't need the instructions. I'm just going to shoot. And, oh, look at that target. I make a target out of that. I make a target out of that. And the real target, we're missing it because that's not really real. Um, as sad as that is, 
<laughs> that book is everything. And I, uh, I encourage you guys to read it because we are not meant to be the, the, the bow. We're not meant to be the quiver. We're only meant to be the arrowhead. It doesn't seem fair. We're like, man, I thought I was a little bit meant to be bigger than that. But see, no matter how you look at it, this one's metal, and that one's made out of rock. In order to make that rock one, the Indians, they had to grab another rock and break it down, break it down, break it down. And we complain, and we are angry with God because he sends us all these difficulties, and we don't like it. We don't understand that he's shaping us into this. And when you shape into this, and God sends you flying, you are able to go through that target that you are meant to go through. That is your purpose. But instead, we're like, no, make me the air. I just want to believe. I. You want to fly. And this metal one, this metal one went through the same process, even worse. It went through fire. And they hit it. And then they grinded it. And then they sharpened it. Now, I don't know if your life, it feels like you're a rock and getting hit in the head, getting sharpened, or it feels like fire. But whatever you're going through, you're going through something. It's up to you if you want to let God turn you into this. Oh, this actually is kind of sharp. <laughs> God wants to turn you into this, or are you just getting hit on the head, getting cut as a rock and becoming another shape, and then you're just kind of useless. If you don't let God sharpen you, you just become another sharp rock. And think about it. How many of us go through pain, and then when someone touches you, they're like, ah, oh, they just get cut. You end up cutting people. You end up being very sharp and edgy. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> Instead of actually getting pointed out. Now, I want I want to end with this. It's a decision. Do you want to be the arrowhead? Are you going to allow the, the lessons and read the Bible and actually become <laughs> that arrow that God intended you to be? If so, I would like you to stand up with me. <sighs> it's, it's not an obligation. It's those who, who truly wish to actually have purpose to say I'm I'm planning on hitting that target whether it be the target of school this year of homework of good friends relationships doing better in, in reading your Bible better language if you really want to hit that target and you think God is calling to you I think we could do it and we could be a great army in that sense let's pray Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this, uh, this opportunity of coming together, Lord, of sharing your message, of it being your words and not mine, that all the stories from the Bible, from, from my life, may be able to be of service, of set an example, to do things better, better even from those who did in the Bible, to be able to be flying and hit that target that you have, that purpose, that amazing things that you have for us that we just are wasting time hitting ourselves over a rock, just in pain, hurting, when there's so much more that you have for us. May you be with us in this day, guide us and give us peace. In ages we pray, amen.